calling the meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. Our first order of business today is the Water Bodies Committee, our annual visit. <laughs> um, apologize uh, when they redid this room, they didn't seem to want to have anybody to sit. <laughs> so uh, we don't have nearly enough chairs. Uh, and what we'd like to do then is uh, whoever is going to present needs to sit here. So let me turn that over to you. Could you please tell us, uh, we don't have anybody brand new, so you don't have to go uh, what you are and such. But if you could tell people uh, uh, what you're doing, what your plans are, the finances, et cetera. OK. Um, introduce ourselves first. Sure. OK. I'm David White from the Conservation Commission, part of the Water Bodies Working Group that sort of reviews all the water body needs in Arlington. <coughs> and people here for other groups to talk today about some of the water body needs. We have Chuck Tarani, Susan Chapman, Brad Barber, Ellen Reedy, Judy Weinberg to talk about their water bodies. Awesome. And I'm Teresa G. Benedictus from Public Works. Okay, okay. The stage is uh, yours. Okay. So you have in front of you a report of what we did last year, what we're hoping to do in the coming year. Okay. We'll go sort of through this by water body. First water body is Arlington Reservoir. I've been involved in that water body for over 15 years. And we've been operating water chestnuts there for a long time. Last year was a very low water year. So we had a hard time harvesting close to the shore. From the mechanical harvesting. But also we had, this year we also had volunteers from the Mystic River Water Association do hand harvesting on the shore as well. So that was a, also a help in that matter. We expect to continue to keep on doing this for a while. At some point the seed bank, since it's an annual plant, will be lower and will be less to harvest and less cost involved. I'm going to transfer now to the people from Notary Lock Park about the Hills Pond situation. <laughs> Liz, could you take these for other people? Hi, I'm Ellen Reed, and this is Judy Weinberg, and we're here as representing the Friends of Monotony Rocks Park. And we are here tonight to talk about Hills Pond. It's a two and a half acre man made pond in the park. And for about the last 12 years, the Friends of Monotony Rocks Park have been paying for the uh, water treatment to reduce the um, invasive water plants and the algae in the pond. This year we are, the friends are paying for major restoration have of the wetland, or have paid for major restoration of the wetland, and um, we proudly own an aeration pump that we are going to have reinstalled into the pond. The aeration is to use literally to add air to the pond because it is a rain-fed pond in the hopes that this will make us less dependent on chemical treatment of the plants and algae in the pond. So we have come before the Water Bodies <coughs> Committee for the first time this year requesting money because we have put so much of our own money into this pond in the last many years. So we have had a pump in the pond that was part of the original plan when the park was renovated many years ago. The pump that was there broke, so we purchased a new pump, and when we went to install it, we realized that the electricity to the line was no longer working. So from the time the first pump broke to the time that we bought the new pump, we found there was no electricity. We've been working, trying to um, see how we can get that resolved. But the pump bed is still there, so we're basically just Re upgrading and replacing an existing uh, aeration system because they have to put all new lines in the water lines were not the hose lines rather were not <coughs> deep enough and they started floating to the top and the dogs started to chew on them so we do we are replacing an old system that no longer was functioning and it's been sitting in Ellen's basement for five, five years. years so we're hoping to get that reinstalled. Most of the money will be used for chemical treatment of the pond. And the chemical treatment of the right. pond. Right, right. The pond, the pump reinstallation reinst is very, very minor in what we are requesting right. for this year. So. All right. Any okay, are there any questions? Just, let's take this one at a time. Any questions on Hills Pond? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bill Brooks, So Chuck Taroni from the Conservation Commission, also on the Water Bodies Committee. And uh, I was asked to talk about Millbrook, and I think the update on that, and uh, just to back up a bit, it's um, on our list. We did an assessment of this area, and it was uh, considered very uh, poor quality and has a rating of D uh, with the uh, EPA. So this year, a um, application came into the CPA committee to uh, look at the corridor along Millbrook between Brattle and Grove Street and um, they're going to look at Wellington Park but they're also going to do some water quality assessments and look for illicit discharges during um, in that area and then all that information will come back to the Conservation Commission and they'll make recommendations on what to do with the, uh, how to improve the water quality and to um, take care of, uh, I guess, the worst of the illicit discharges. Um, it's uh, just in the process of being uh, discussed at the uh, CPA committee, and uh, it looks favorable, but uh, it's not been approved yet. So uh, just an update on Millbrook. Any questions? Any questions? Grant. Um, what do you mean by illicit discharge? So an illicit I I discharge or a hot spot would be some illegal um, discharges of water or brackish water or water with oil in it that's being uh, illegally pumped into the stream. Usually that's uh, basement pumps or it could be broken sewers, uh, you know, things like that. And they'll spot these and sometimes they can scope the line and I don't know how what the extent they're going to do. Today they <coughs> told me that uh, they had been doing this for several years and they they have a lot of information already. So we haven't been part of that information that they have, but they'll be giving that to the Conservation Commission uh, and the town. And I guess with that information, they'll be able to make some uh, judgments and see what they need to fix. So. Okay, thank you. Stephen, just a question on the rating. Is, is it tested? Throughout town, or just it, it, uh, no? It the, the D rating is statewide, um, and uh, it has a category. I don't know the category and what what it takes to be in that category, but it's 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 low. I mean, A would yeah. be. I'm just curious where the samples are. Where it earns that rating? Is it just testing throughout Millbrook? I, mean, I know it's a state rating, but um, or is it a particular? Um, let me ask uh, Susan if you looked into this. Is a, do you um, know where the uh, sampling yeah, was the, done? Yeah, the sampling is done by um, Myra, the Mystic River Watershed Association, as well for EPA. And they do it at different spots. I don't know exactly where they are. But Millbrook, mainly in Arlington, is the problem. And, and then if, um, there we have two level D waterways in Arlington, Millbrook and Alewife Brook. Now, of course, Alewife has a lot of um, other kinds of um, effects from Cambridge and you know, places like that. But Millbrook, um, I, I don't, I don't have a map here, but I believe it's mainly in Arlington. Is are the issues? Yes, it's in Arlington. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering, if, you know, above Dudley Street, below, in, 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 above yeah. Wellington Park, it, it does. It, you know, I can follow up later. Just curious. If, uh, I know they test near. Mystic Lakes, at once point I okay. really tested. Okay. And also, and the test, the rating has to do with bacteria. Mm -hmm. That's really what the test for. They don't do other chemicals oh. in this type of test. Okay, thank you. Sorry, what chemicals? Bacteria. bacteria. Okay. It's bacterial contamination, so what E. coli. Okay, so that would mean a broken sewer line or an illegal, yeah. illegal discharge. Yeah. Anybody else? I have a question. Do L life still come up? No, Brooke? Oh, uh, I've heard they've they come up to Cook's Hollow. Up to Cook's Hollow, it's not Cook's Hollow because there's a yeah, dam, there's a falls there. They come up to this point. Yeah. Do they? Cook's Hollow. So that's the breeding area. Well, because they can't get past it. Yeah. They, probably also the Meadow Brook Park. Yeah. Actually, the cemetery. Right. Okay. And further up in the Mystic as well. So the fish line was Mystic Lake still. Right. Okay, I was just curious. I remember in years past, you know, the kids scooping them out. And, uh, That's funny. 
<laughs> they still come, yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, any other questions on Bill? Okay, thank you. So um, I'm going to stay here because the next McLennan one is uh, McLennan Park. This is a big one. I'm Susan Chapnick. I'm on the Conservation Commission and the Water Bodies Working Group. Um, if you remember uh, McLennan Park, um, just for um, a recap, um, these are small detention ponds that um, were created by the town after capping the landfill um, over where McLennan Park is. And we created parks in the front and playing fields, and in the back are detention ponds which help with stormwater um, and also wildlife. Um, there was a problem. We came to you last year requesting $10,000 to assess the brownish discoloration of the water, um, which we thought was iron flocculation. Um, we did that assessment. We don't have the final report yet. Um, we just talked to the contractor today and got the latest information. What they said is it, it is iron. Um, the main contaminants of concern there are iron and manganese. Um, it's not a human health risk, which is a good thing, but it might be an ecological risk, meaning that it, it, it's likely it's detrimental to the wildlife, um, to you know, things that live in the pond, um, in the sediment, um, ducks, birds, etc. We don't know that though, so the next step that was recommended is to do what we call an ecological risk assessment to evaluate what is the risk to the ecology, to the wildlife of this iron flocculation that's happening. Um, we believe it's happening due to groundwater that was contaminated that was under the landfill seeping up into these detention ponds. <coughs> um, so we're requesting another 10,000 um, to start that evaluation of the ecological risk assessment for this pond in order to um, improve the aesthetic and recreational and wildlife functions of the, of the area. Is there anything more to add? Any questions? Yeah, uh, you know, well, the, the risk, we can do the risk assessment and then um, what we're going to do, or which we're hoping to do, and <coughs> then, um, then more of a if that comes out where there's no risk, then you we would want it to look at um, trying to see what's why this is turning red and, and what we could do about that. And but the first step, um, the only step to take right now is to the ecological risk assessment. So there may be other steps after this. This will lead into a different area also. So there may be uh, a need for more testing next year, but down different paths. So you, you want another 10000 for another assessment? Right. What we did um, with the 10000 we had already, and we will have the report by the end of February, um, which we will make available, um, is uh, they did a review, a uh, document review at DEP um, to see how the landfill was capped, because this was a long time ago and they, we didn't know what, if it was lined or, or things like that. Then they also, we actually did sampling and analysis of the pond with that $10,000. So we did sampling of water and sediments on the edge of the pond um, to get an idea of what's going on. And that's what we did so far to find out what's, what are the contaminants of concern. And we ruled out some contaminants, organic contaminants, volatile organic contaminants, which came back non-detected pretty much. Um, so we ruled out some contaminants. And now we're focused on um, the ecological risk, we have to take more samples more towards the middle of the pond mm -hmm. um, to evaluate that. We need more of an area um, being tested, and we also need it seasonally um, because in order to evaluate the risk to the, to the uh, ecosystem, it changes over seasons because, for example, in the summer you can have stratification of the water due to temperature gradients, and you can get um, low oxygen levels which affect the organisms, so we don't know what's happening, but this is pointing us in that direction, so we're asking for additional funds to assess that. So the first assessment led us into this assessment, and like I said, we can't, we can't look at the aesthetics, that red, brownish color, and say we can clean that up, because if there's a, um, if there's a ecological risk, then that gives us a different 
kind of a different path to go down. So it's just it's just steps, you know, as we find them and and push them out of the way, then we can get on to the next one. So, you know, that's why we're here with this just simple request instead of combining more than just one. And if you get your 10,000, um, when would you start the study? Spring, as soon as it's pretty much thaw, because um, uh, we did some preliminary um, outreach to an ecological risk <coughs> assessor, um, and he uh, explained that you, because of the seasonality, you want to get started. So you want to do it spring, um, summer, and fall testing. Um, and is 10,000 enough to do what you feel like you need to do at this stage? It's enough to start. It I, might not be enough, frankly, to get to the end of that evaluation and a report, but it's enough to get us started on it. Um, We wanted to kind of see as we started the testing, you know, we don't have a we don't have that other report yet from the end of February. We just had a verbal, so we wanted we asked for we're asking for ten thousand to kind of get us going, um, but frankly, we may need more than that to finish the assessment. Could you make that report available to the science plan? Sure, absolutely. Anything that uh, any reports you want distributed to the finance committee, uh, just send them to Liz in the back. Okay. And she'll distribute them. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions? If you need part? additional funding, how would you go about requesting that? And first of all, when, when do you think you'd need it? When, how would you go about trying to get it? Um, next, well. next summer, I think we would probably have the answers to most of those questions. And then, depending on what it says, uh, uh, the CPA committee is uh, probably would be a better a better source because um, the numbers might be a lot higher than ten than ten thousand. Um, so and it could be more of a study, and there could be some wells um, uh, that were needed to do some monitoring. Uh, so if we get into the aesthetics, they want to know which way the groundwater is moving. So they need the wells, and then they could make a, a judgment on that so there's there's multiple steps needed but um, with this first step we can we can uh, you know continually continue to move forward and um, and not, not lose any time and and try to get some answers for you guys for next year um, I think the the first uh, 10,000 that you gave us uh, gave us some good feedback uh, to know that there's uh, what people are looking out there has no human risk is uh, probably very comforting to a lot of people that uh, walk around McLennan. So um, that's good. And then the ecological would be great because if we could get that out of the way and then we look at the aesthetics, we could get um, more wildlife and more traffic down in that area and hopefully do some things that bring back in the bird population and the duck population. <coughs> so um, again, if, any, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's uh, reddish brown. It's uh, like gelatin that's on all the water stems and on the, on the sides of the bank. And it's probably on most of the ducks that are in there too. So it's not very pleasant. Brad? Would any of that um, funding be also used, or the outcome of the study be used to, let's say, validate the source? <coughs> I mean, it's just suspected that it's because it was capped and not lined, or has there been right? We need we need more ground we yeah. need more groundwater data, um, and in order to this this amount of money won't do that. No. Um, we need to put in several groundwater wells. They punch wells in in certain places to kind of see if it's actually coming from the landfill. That would be another phase. We're trying to do a <coughs> phased approach, um, but definitely that would be the next phase because before we could implement any kind of remedy, let's say, if we do find a risk, we have to make sure that's the source because then you can't implement a remedy unless you know where it's coming from. So what they're talking about is they're doing sampling, so they're just going to take samples on the surface of the water. So that's sediment. It, yeah, and sediment, sediment. And then in the center of the pond. Mm -hmm. so, and I, uh, so it'll take a greater than half inch of iron flock over an area greater than 500 square feet to trigger uh, a risk 
threshold. So they have to do that, looking for a grade, an area greater than 500 feet with a half inch of iron flock, and then it has to be in several seasons. So that's, that's the study we're looking to do to assess the risk assessment. Okay, so I'm, I'm here essentially going to um, identify what the risks are, but the first study isn't going to identify, actually, or ver verify the source. No. No. Now, is it about being capped and not lined? This is sort of new, um, new to me. Is that unusual? Is so that how it's supposed to be? Or so you would need to know which way the water's, the groundwater's ground going. So everyone suspects it's coming from the capped landfill, but it might not be, and that's why when they punch in those wells, we'll know what direction that's, that's heading. But we're not... That's not what this study's about. So I was wondering we could be study. very surprised, in other words. I mean, it could be coming from the swamp, you know, to, to the left, to the right, whichever way, which way that is. Um, there's, I can remember one time I was going by there and I saw a uh, big piece of metal in there and several tires, and I was told by the DPW that these things appear just because it was a landfill once. And They'll clean it out and come back, and someone will spot something else. So there's a lot of metal and whatnot in there. And it, it, the reason it wasn't lined, it was an old landfill. Landfills that are put in in more recent times have to be lined. Yeah, it was so lined that they don't clay. have right. And the, this doesn't have a, a real lining that would prevent the groundwater infiltration. And we know that for sure. Um, I, that's what they they checked in the DPW files for. They said it's an unlined land. Okay, so. Yeah. The, of course, per DPW, right. it's online. Okay, thank you. Uh, so DEP. It yeah. has a cap. So the cap is basically soil. That's what a cap is, soil and grass, you know, plant ends. And so hopefully, you know, that it filters out things before it gets down. That doesn't mean that it works perfectly because then, it, you know, the groundwater underneath. Maybe. Right. That I don't remember, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise it would just go down right. through the landfill and right. take right. all the bad right. stuff. Right, 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 right. Sorry, yes. Just a historical. It was actually two different landfills at that location. Oh, really? Okay. One, one we all refer to it as, as the one we all know about for years. But before that, when that was a celery farm, oh. the front part heading towards Summer Street yeah. was the celery farm, but way in the back, was landfill, was an uncontrolled landfill, just people just people dumped just everything dumped and it. anything, cars, you name it. And that's where, where you now get all of a sudden pieces of metal come up mm. all over. And then it, it turned into a, for, uh, it, it was a marshland. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, as a kid, when I, I grew up in that area, we, uh -huh. we call it the meadow. But it was, it was always a marshland. And, mm -hmm. and the water color you're referring to was, when it was the marshland, it was that color. Mm. That brownish red, um, but the front of it was, was when you looked at that land from Summer Street, <coughs> you didn't look at it. You looked, it was down, hmm. it was very below street level, and that was the rows and rows of, of the celery farm, and the celery farm probably went out from Summer Street, probably halfway in into that land, mm -hmm. and it stopped. Hmm. There, there was a buffer, mm -hmm. and then from that point on, all the way out to Wright Street, that was a Uncontrolled landfill. So that, that that's where you get. This. Mm -hmm. Okay, Grant. Yes, I'm just trying to understand. Was the capping um, done as um, deficient, deficiently, uh, as not prospect per se? In other words, oh no, no, not? it was done correctly. It was done by by the town of Arlington, yes, a, a, a contractor for right. the town of Arlington. And it was done. It was done correctly for yeah for okay. for okay. the time. It was done yeah. by the town. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. front part, only the part where the town used it as, as the more modern, if you will, dump. Correct. The back part was never touched. It's private. No. Right. It's private land. Yeah. yeah. And actually, if you go with the back part and you look at these detention ponds, it almost looks like two ponds when you face them. There's still some property back there that has lots of trash and debris in their yards that mm. are right by the pond. So I, I remember as a young, yeah. there was houses there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of there houses there. Uh, cinder block that's, houses, that's there's a couple yeah. that people actually live in. Always interesting to get the history. Yeah, really. <laughs> of some of these places. 
improve the bad and the ugly. Are there any other questions on the McLennan Park? Are there any, like, are there any fish in the retention ponds or frogs or? They probably are. Um, I haven't seen fish. I've seen frogs, um, ducks, and some nests there. Yeah. Um, great blue herons. Is it, well, there. there you go. There must be fish. So there must be fish because there's great blue herons. So. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. And actually, the report will have something on the ecology. I didn't get that piece today when I spoke verbally to them. Okay. But the report we're getting at the end of February will have something about the right. ecology. The wildlife. Yes. Now, I always, you know, I always get this mixed up. Does that flow into Lexington yes. or away it from? It flows into Lexington. Into Lexington. Yeah. That's Reed Brook flows through the detention ponds and then out the other end into Lexington. Towards Purple Hill. Towards Purple Hill. I always say Reed to Monroe, but where does it end? It does. It does. Yes. It ends up in, uh, you know, it actually circles around. It's going to be right, pretty close to um, the reservoir. The reservoir. It goes, it flows downhill, it crosses over where Lowell and the summer come together. Yeah. Uh, into wetlands by the LCA. Yeah, it's Monroe Brook. Brook. Then into the reservoir. And Moreau has the uh, lowest rating in the state, so it's not. Yeah, it, it does cross over, which when you look at it, you wouldn't think it crosses under Summer Street. Yes. And then it, it goes up through. Near Haskell, Haskell Street, and Lexington, and it flows over to, to Lowell Street. Maybe that's the source of the pollution from Mill Brook. Well, that's right. <laughs> I was wondering. Monroe is worse. Yeah. It moves into the Reds. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Monroe is yeah. worse. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Next water body is Spy Pond. We have the Uh, I'm Brad Barber. I'm the uh, co-chair of the Spy Pond Committee, and we're part of Vision 2020. Um, since since uh, we talked a little bit about Spy Pond, the last uh, last meeting here, and um, we had a very good 12 months since then. Um, three three major events. One was um, this was our treatment for sonar, which is our major. Um, is, is, the, is the major herbicide that we use. Um, and then that should last for three years. And we do spot treatments in the inter, in between years. Um, we've had a banner year for uh, Engelmann's umbrella sedge. And that's a rare plant in Massachusetts. And there was lots of it all around the pond because of the low water and the dry, the dry summer. Um, and then um, the best news, at least for myself, is uh, when I first started with Spy Pond, which is about eight, nine years ago, we had an acre and a half of Phragmites. Those are those tall, tall reeds that you see all over, especially like around um, AOI uh, Station. And, um, and it was, we, had, we had a very impressive stand on Spy Pond. There was about an acre and a half of it. Um, and uh, it was, it was, we had it growing in seven feet of water and up to 20 feet high in places. Um, and the last treatment of that was uh, last fall, yes. and just a few months ago. And uh, I think we're going to declare victory, mainly because we've run out of the uh, Phragmites of fund, <laughs> <laughs> and we've uh, run, we've also Perfect all our timing. licenses for treating. We actually, it was quite an exercise to get the licenses uh, to do this. Um, we had to pull the plan. There was a stack of paper about that high. And those have, have finally, finally run down. So, um, and there's, I think, there's no more Phragmites. I haven't seen any. Have you Excellent seen any? Excellent timing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there, there will be some, but it's, it's, it's now, now you have to look for them. We won't really know how effective this fall treatment was. And those are the three major items, and uh, I think the plan is to continue as we have before with Spy Pond. So, were these non-native species? Yes. This is a um, there's a, there is a native Phragmites, um, but what's happened is that's been taken over by a Phragmites that came in from Europe. Um, it's related to the reed that they used for growing a uh, patch, and so. Um, it's a particularly aggressive grower and makes a monoculture. Um, if you ever want 
uh, one of my joys is the marsh that's in behind Cowan Manor um, off of uh, Spy, Pond, uh, Spy Pond Parkway. And that was just solid Phragmites. And I've walked through it, and it wasn't a pleasant exercise. Um, and now it's a marsh with hundreds of different varieties of plants. Um, it's really, it's, it's quite a transformation. Now, how about the marsh over by Route 2 where the bike path passes underneath it to the left? This is so that's Phragmites. Okay, so all that is, you'd like to, should be gotten rid of it. So it should be gotten rid of it too. It's, it's, it's getting the permits is, is an exercise. Um, actually treating it is, is, is quite easy to do. But it takes somebody, it takes, it takes somebody leading the effort. That's really what it, what it requires. Okay. Our questions on Spy Pond? Christina? Yes. What's, what's, Christina? What was the origin of the Phragmite Fund? How, how was um, that that was done by, uh, we saw the problem and realized that it, that, you know, I think the initial treatment was like four thousand dollars, and and we uh, basically set up a. Uh, we, we at that time we had the water bodies fund, and we requested um, suggested that people send in donations to the water bodies fund, um, and we actually it was, I was surprised. You know, we had people from all over Arlington send in donations. It was. Uh, we had about nine, nine or ten thousand of donations of private so, funds. Of yes. private funds. Yeah. So everything except for two hundred and eighty dollars was all donations towards this effort. And there were no public funds. Two hundred and eighty bucks this past year to do the last treatment. We spent about thirty one hundred, and there was only twenty hundred twenty eight seventy left in the account. Have you considered renewing that effort and? Um, addressing the Phragmites in other parts of the town, like for example, they're run amok in McLennan, and as Al, Al points out, there are other areas of the town that are now um, suffering from Phragmites. Yeah, it, it certainly could be done. You know, it's it's uh, the Spy Pond Committee is is concentrating on Spy Pond. Um, it really requires someone taking the lead. Um, the actual treatment is easy to do. Um, getting the permits is a lot of work. Is this something that DPW can, can spearhead? I think we, this funds? was the first, this weed here was more of like a quality of life issue weed. So I think we didn't see it in, from public works perspective as a bad thing per se. That it wasn't good. It's not like you know the treatments that we do on spy. That if we don't do anything, that pond's just going to die and nothing will live in it. Those are the type of issues that we take on in public works. So this was brought to us by abutters, basically saying, "Hey, this, you know, <coughs> the pond is a mess, and you know we can't even see the water because we're looking at these weeds that are, that are out of control." Said, "Well, okay, fine. What? Okay." what about donations and it was just kind of a uh, something that took on a life of its own we got many you know donations were pouring in set up the account and we did a lot of work follow-up working with the uh, vision 2020 committee to get the permits it is a, a yeoman's task um, and if it weren't for all the abutters doing a lot of work I don't know that we would have been successful even with this you need an, a permission for each person that you have to go on their property to treat. You have to get a sign off on every single person. But for um, example, in McLennan, you don't need it. There's, there, the Phragmite problem there is in the park itself. So that was someplace that yeah, they, that would be we would something that we would take cons cons cues on. Is this an issue? Is this something we should worry about, or is it just there? It sounds like it's, what you really need is sort of a friends of to focus on an area and do the, a lot of the legwork, yes. both to raise the money and the policies and all. Who actually does the, what is it, a spraying to it's, kill? Yeah, it was done by uh, the company that was called Aquatic Control Technology. Yep. Yeah. The same company. The same company as what we're currently Solitude using. Solitude Lake Management is their current company name. 
um, and it's a backpack sprayers. And actually, um, we had enough that they brought in. They had a um, an airboat with a with a, a sprayer mounted on top, attacking it from one side, and they had a a tracked vehicle that could uh, uh, go over land, also with a with a a, a nozzle mounted. Okay. Let's just say, let's take the marsh down yeah. Route 2 and uh, the uh, uh, bike path. Yeah. That marsh in there. Yeah. So, uh, if, if somebody went gangbusters, did the work, raised the money, um, and they sprayed that whole marsh, what would, what do you foresee would come up to take the place? Um, it's, it's a, uh, it would be basically grasses, sedges, and um, oh, there were cattails there once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there would be cattails. Was, cattails is one of the more common ones. Yeah. But Brad, didn't you spread out sea? Oh yeah, we did all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. So you would probably want to plant that too. So the, the base of the Phragmite is is like you know like a coconut husk uh, root system, and it takes a little while for that to break down. So it's a long process. Um, I think the other thing I would add is that. Uh, Spy Pond was extremely difficult. We had an attack from both areas because of that uh, edelman sedge. It was endangered, so they really had to be more careful. This uh, place down by Spy Pond, or by, down by the bike path, it, it doesn't have any endangered species. It could be. Well, uh, we didn't know there was an edelman right. sedge until we tried but to do the Phragmite, so right. there may be. That, oh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And that costs a lot of money. <laughs> when you find things that okay. need to That's be protected. Uh, are there any other questions on the spy pond? This David. question on the erosion, is, is that concentrated or is it sporadic around the pond? Um, uh, you're talking about the erosion where they did, uh, where they're doing the, um, the uh, CPA uh, okay. program, the public land okay. around Spy Pond Park. Okay, that's weird, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. so that, that, that area is particularly eroded. Mm -hmm. um, spy Pond does um, especially along the southern edge, which is all sand, mm -hmm. it wants to go into the pond. Um, and uh, erosion <coughs> is a, an ongoing pro problem for all of the all of the abutters. And um, I think the most serious section is uh, the condominiums, mm -hmm. particularly the the first one, which is quite close to the uh, quite close to the pond. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Are you all set, or do you yeah. want to run this over on the budget? Oh, okay. 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 I just wanted to update everybody on the um, the project we're doing at the uh, Mystic River uh, waterfront area. Um, just kind of as a as a good news story that we are um, actively seeking funds from other sources to improve water bodies in Arlington. So the Arlington Conservation Commission and the town um, was awarded a natural resource damage assessment grant. Um, in the amount of $47,325 to do a project along the Mystic River where there was the oil spill, if you remember, back in 2013. A tanker went over and spilled almost 10,000 gallons um, uh, on the roadway and into the river. Um, what we're proposing, what we're doing there, actually, it's not a proposal anymore, it's a real project, which is great. Um, we're creating a, a native river bank habitat we're removing an old, um, dilapidated, non-working concrete outfall um, that's not even attached to the pipe <coughs> anymore. It's like falling into the river. Um, we're going to remove that. We're going to create a nice habitat and stabilize the bank. We're also going to create an area um, of uh, a path and seating and signage for the public and plantings, native plantings so that the public can enjoy that area and understand what happened there, that the oil spill happened and that we're restoring it. Coupled with that, um, DPW, the town, has agreed 
to put in a pretreatment of stormwater um, up river uh, upland of that um, on uh, pretty much the corner of Park and Park Street and Coral around that area. Um, this coupled with the new habitat that we're doing will actually improve water quality in that area um, because we'll get less silt and um, organics that run off from the highway oils and things like that actually coming into the river at that that um, place. So I just wanted to say we're going to start in the spring. Um, the first step is getting all our permits. We um, have a public meeting actually tomorrow, tomorrow night, right? right. Tomorrow night already <laughs> is the first public meeting at the Conservation Commission um, where we're also presenting the notice of intent um, <coughs> for this work. So I don't know if anybody had any questions about that. How large an area of the river are we talking? Um, let's see, it was about five, was it 500, 500 linear feet? Well, the project is smaller than that. Yeah, it's four, it'll help about that much, but the project is about, I would say about 50, 75, uh, right along the waterway. But then up from the bank, we're also doing that little air planting area where we're going to involve the community in in doing native plants and creating a little habitat area that people can sit at and okay. enjoy. Yeah. What's the Mystic River rated these days? That part of the river is, it, it goes from a B plus to an A minus, so it's not terrible. Um, I'm sure you have B plus? B plus, about a B plus. Um, further up toward the upper lake, it's more of an A, A minus. Um, but B plus isn't terrible, but it's could use improvement. Is it swimmable? I don't think. I, I mean, if you fall in, it's not a problem, but I, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you drive to swim. To no, I mean, you can kayak and stuff, and if the kayak turns over and it comes back, you're okay. But, I, you know, I yeah. don't, it's not swimmable. Yeah. Okay. And how about the upper mystic? Oh, the upper mystic is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Up by Winchester. Right, in the beach. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That gets an A rating. Okay. Yeah. It's been cleaned up a lot. So, uh, questions? Alan? Uh, general question, sort of a you know, natural concern about uh, the use of herbicides. I was wondering if you could just comment for the public on the uh, safety of the, the, uh, of the herbicides that are selected for the plant management. Okay, we're using no herbicides on the Mystic River Restoration Project. Uh, I, I meant for the, in general, for, for all in, the water. Oh, in general. Yeah. Okay, not, um, it's not exactly my area of expertise, but I would say that when we talked about Phragmites, for example, um, the chemical that's commonly used for Phragmites is called glyphosate, um, it's Roundup. Um, there's been a lot of um, information <coughs> in the past few years out of EPA and other studies that show that it may not be as safe as they kept saying it was for years. I'm concerned about it. Um, I, on the Arlington Conservation Commission, we put certain safeguards on the use of glyphosate. So for example, um, as Brad was talking about on Spy Pond, when they had to do the backpack sprayers, we put controls on that. Um, certain wind times, they couldn't do it if it was too windy. Um, they had to do spot treatments whenever they could. We did not allow aerial spraying anymore because it could be considered a human health hazard. So I do think it's prudent um, to be concerned about these herbicides that we do have to use sometimes. It's a balance between, you know, helping out the native plants and, and getting a good environment versus the human health effects of these chemicals. It's definitely a balance. Any comments about uh, reward and sonar? The, the, the we use on spy. Yeah. So um, the only thing I'll say, I mean, you know, it would be great if we didn't have to use any <laughs> of these, but the using them judiciously. The um, companies that we use do have permits. They are trained to use them in a certain way. Um, I'm always a big proponent on the Arlington Conservation Commission of trying to find any other way but chemicals 
which is one of the reasons why we want to try to get that aeration pump working at Hills because we're hoping that will reduce some of the chemicals they use there. There they use chemicals for algae um, a lot too. Um, we think it might help with that. But it, it's a balance. I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a balance. We close, we post and close the pond areas where we treat um, for the amount of time, and it's different for each chemical on how, what is the half-life, you know, when it, when it dissipates. Um, so we're really careful about that, and we um, notify the abutters of treatment. Um, it, it, it's a balance. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a balance, but it's something to definitely think of, and I think what we're trying to do in the Water Bodies Work Group and the Arlington Conservation Commission is look at these over time and hopefully get the <coughs> chemical treatments down. We hand harvest and, and mechanical harvest at the reservoir. We don't use chemical mm -hmm. treatments there. So there are, you know, there are other ways of doing things if we can, you know, use them in certain areas. The details of the chemicals available on the website? Um, yeah, they, they have. Um, yeah, just for if people in the public want to look oh, at it. Oh, for people want to look at it, absolutely. And the Arlington Conservation Commission, when we approve chemicals, they're, they're in the order of conditions. And uh, any of the public can go and, and pick that up and look at it. I mean, there's a lots of details on the chemicals in the back of the order of conditions and how they have to be used and what are the risks. Um, there was also, you can get it, like Google the, um, the health and safety sheets. They're called MSDS sheets. Yeah. It's the name of the chemical, right? True. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? questions? Can yeah. I just, just do another sure. uh, follow-up? Uh, <coughs> the, uh, if you talk to people who've been on Spy Pond for a while, um, historically there's been times when they've let the pond go and just, just not treat it. And, um, Spy Pond has as, as many urban water bodies, has a lot, of, a lot of nutrients in the sediment coming in. Um, uh, it wants to grow. And uh, the herbicides seem to be the most effective way. In fact, in, in, many, in many cases, like for Spy Pond, probably the only effective way. Um, you do, you know, you don't want to overuse them. You want to keep up with the latest recommendations. The state is, of course, concerned about this. Um, so we just, you know, it's a management issue. If you, if you don't let it get out of control, then you don't have to be too aggressive about it. It's when it becomes this big, serious problem, that's when you have to start using the heavier dosages. That's not so good. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, it was a pleasure. Okay, I updated the spreadsheet from the last version last spring. So, and I added a few little features. I know sometimes when I'm trying to direct people, they're like, well, where are you? So I numbered the columns um, as well as the pages. So I got, and I made it bigger so that yeah. so I can sort of see without glasses. Page <coughs> side one, side two, and numbered the columns um, to orient ourselves. So on side one, the, and the, the, there's the three sections too. The first one is the whole of the fund. The second is the breakout of the Phragmites, and section three is the two together. And one thing you'll notice is that section three will be coming to an end because as we spoke of before, we spent down the Phragmites uh, account and managed the uh, process. So that's gonna be trailing off, but I figured I'd leave it for this year so you you'd be expecting it and wonder what, what had happened. But going to the first section on side one, we're in currently FY17. We had got a uh, $50,000 appropriation. Um, that went on top of our beginning balance of 38. Uh, we received $1,800 in donations. Then the budget that we are expecting to uh, have this year is almost uh, $50,000. That the 23, 16, 500, and the 10. Uh, I'll give you a little more detail looking at the back side, which has the budget, but those are the line <coughs> items for this year. And everything coming to fruition, we would finish up at $40,000 
at this end of this fiscal year. We're here to talk about FY18 and how much money we think we need. That number we have pegged at 55000 and the details broken out here, but I'll talk a little more about it. So we're bumping it up, um, and at the same time, we're expecting our balance to be uh, going down to 29000 So I'll give you a little more detail about that. So if you want to go on to side two, we can... In the uh, FY17, the one that we're in, we have all the projects broken down. We have, we got $14,000 for uh, sonar treatment, which as it says would be spent in FY19. So we have 14,000 for three years to do that project, <coughs> which we would do in a couple of years time. We had $15,000 for water chestnuts at the reservoir, um, which has already been spent. We are carrying $5,000 um, for an algae treatment should we need it at SPY. And then we have water quality, plant ID, and testing at uh, multiple locations coming to the 5,500. We have this, the small 280 expense that closed out the Phragmites that I had mentioned before, and the $10,000 um, that was used by the Conservation Commission to begin looking at McLennan. And that money was, is encumbered and will be spent. So I've, at this point, spent about half of this fiscal year's budget. Um, I'll be carrying the 14000 into next year, um, rolling it forward for a spy and then you know we never know you know are, am, are we going to have an algae treatment are we not going to have an algae treatment but that's where the budget is at this point looking into next fiscal year FY18 we are there's our second uh, request for 14 for a uh, spy $10,000 for a reward treatment at spy what we do is as we did in FY16, we did the uh, sonar treatment. The next year after, the, you get an off year. Then the year after that, you have a spot treatment of reward usually. So that's where we would be. This current year is the off year. This coming year is the spot treatment year. So we need the 10000 for that. We're carrying, we're, we talked quite a bit about the res and how were we feeling about the water chestnuts, could we bring the number down, you know, and we ended up feeling like we should keep it at 15000 this coming year. We are making headway, um, but it's a tough issue to really beat those things back. Um, we're getting a lot of help from the Mystic River Watershed Association, bringing, you know, a couple hundred volunteers in the spring over multiple days, a couple hundred more, they're corporate, like, community service days. And they'll have 25 or 30 canoes out, and they're hand-picking on the edges. Because when the, the harvester comes, cuts the plant, it gets the bulk of them. The, the pods float to the sides, and then they're just going to start the process again. So they can get <coughs> in the edges where, where the little floaties are. And they can get into the shallow part over on the Lexington side that the harvester really can't get in one area that's just too shallow there they can get in there and really help us make some headway so that that is helping <coughs> but n we feel like it's not yet the time that we're we're over the hump and can start cutting that back to less and less so we decided we really needed to go for 15 again so that's where that is at um, I carry my algae treatment um, forward and then this next one um, folks talked about uh, adding Hills Pond treatment for water quality testing so that <coughs> number usually you see 6500 55 6500 we added another 5000 for Hills Pond so that uh, line item is 11.5 then the 10,000 we spoke of for McLennan's uh, follow-on work at the detention basin so that brings that number for next year's budget to 65.5 so as a result 
we were th had initially at this time last year we had a number of 50,000 for FY18 so we're bumping that up to 55 thousand and then <coughs> looking at what we're expecting for numbers at least at this point to be carrying from McLennan in coming years <coughs> we've tentatively put in 60,000 in FY19 and FY20 not with any idea what possibly large number or numbers we could need at McLennan that's sort of off to the side and probably beyond what we would be doing just in this water bodies um, fund. So that's where we are this fiscal year. What got us to asking for 55 for the coming fiscal year? And if <coughs> anybody has any questions. Are there any questions on the budget? Christine? So uh, what you were saying at the very end, are you, depending on what's found at McLennan, is it your expectation that money to address that would not come from future water bodies funds? That's my expectation. <coughs> that this is sort of a management and, you know, Visual treatment system. and studying of water bodies. Uh, you know, if we need to construct things or have very large reports that we need, you know, tens of thousands, that's beyond the, at least the initial concept of what this account was for. Certainly, if you want to put $100,000 in this account, we'd <coughs> find a way to spend it. But um, that's not been what, how we've been running this account. In other words, you don't build things. Correct. In this, in this one. In this one. <laughs> so that if you were building something I like, is it Again, capital? Is it, you yeah, know, right. okay. it, it slash, would it fall into other, <coughs> other pots of money at your discretion? Questions, Alan? Um, in, in 2018, there's a big zero for Conservation Commission. Is there an impact of that? They. We're, we're sort of in the sort of focus on McLennan, I think. You said the focus on McLennan. Okay. That's why it's <coughs> shifted there. Yeah, they said put the 10 in McLennan and not in the other bucket. So just keep um, it focused on one thing at a time. Right. It could be that when, at this time next year, when we're looking into 19, oh, I need 10,000 for McLennan and another 5,000 for something else. <coughs> something like that, but something on that order. Okay. Are there other questions? Grant? Um, the testing, water testing, um, how coordinated is that effort? Is it the same type of tests are performed on each water body, or is it? It's kind of what's needed per, um, and like the, the Vision 2020 working group is heavily involved in what happens at SPY, sort of different groups working with the Conservation Commission. <coughs> we do testing as needed. Some years we don't have to do any, and other years, like if there's an algae bloom at, at SPY, we need to do something. What are you testing for? for I, mean, I think it's related to treatment needs. Right. Related to, related to the treatment needs of those water bodies. Related to what's needed for treatment of those water bodies. And you have to do testing to, to, to the get the information to do treatment. And what information do you get from the testing? What 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 the status of the water is? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Like basic, I don't plants, do the basic plants, basic plants, yeah. plant growth primarily. You test, they but, also, but they do they do dissolved oxygen, they do temperature, yeah. they do um, <coughs> basic parameters, phosphorus, um, nutrients. Okay. So and basic for parameters for the for the plants. Mm -hmm. That they're going to be treating, they yeah. have to know what the, the status of the water quality is before they do the treatment. Okay, so and it's the same standard of test for each of these, so you the can compare them? Yes, the only time that differs is, for example, like McLennan, when we're doing a special project and we told the contractor what we wanted to test and actually talked back and forth with them about what they suggested. So we did metals testing, for example, because we thought the flock was iron or something like that. That's not a standard test okay. for these water bodies. Usually it's nutrients, temperature, 
pH, those kinds of bacteria. things. Bacteria. Bacteria, yeah. yeah. Do you, do you, do any, does it, I mean, there's a flow, right? It goes from McLennan, which you're testing. Well, actually, I don't see a test just for that underwater testing. That might be separate, but I don't see any test performed from McLennan, which is pretty serious. But that flows into the res, and there is testing, but, and then that flows into Millbrook, <coughs> which, of course, then flows into Mystic Lake. So, um, but that's whole different because Mystic Lake isn't. And I understand the testing from Millbrook is done by a different, perhaps by my WRA rather than than this project. But but I see there's a connection there, and I'm wondering, you know, you're sort of fixing something, <coughs> but not focusing on the big picture because one's just sort of might just be contributing to the other. And I'm just wondering if there's any focus on the whole, you know, ecosystem essentially. So so what yeah. you're getting is. Um, when, when the flow is going through, like we described, it through Marie's Brook, down Monroe, and then eventually through to uh, Millbrook uh, by the Reds, it's going through several uh, wetlands, and things are being flushed out in there, and that's and that's benefiting everyone, and that's why you know the Conservation Commission exists because if we can get all our water to flow through wetlands and keep those working correctly, it acts like a filter. And that filter is um, seen on the other side of Monroe Brook and the other side of Reed Brook because I believe that spot um, where Herd Field is is pretty clean right there, although it comes out of the wetlands that Monroe feeds into. So that's, that's the benefit of, of what's happening. But we don't know what's entering into the wetlands or into Monroe Brook or into the, the reservoir outside of Arlington, um, and we don't have any testing on that. But, I mean, it sounds like your question is, can we clean up area A and get, uh, and B, C, and D will benefit from that? And it's true, you will get some benefit, but you have to kind of control what's going into that stream. Yeah, and the other <coughs> question was, we don't really, I don't hear a measurement to say you believe it might be cleaner, but so, but it, just wondering, uh, are the results of these tests available, perhaps? Yeah, so um, I, I you know, used to work in Oxford in the conservation office up there, and they had a stream team, and all the stream monitoring was on a website. <coughs> I'm sure Myra does it. Myra does it, yes. So you could actually just look at their website and you know, when we get home tonight and just see what the levels are, see what they're testing for, what the levels are and see where they're located. And oh, okay. And they'd also have that for the res. I don't think sure they testing test it. the res. Well, well yeah. where would we get the, the results for that? We have we have results for spy pond. We have results for the res too from solitude. Yeah. We it's don't do test. We don't do water quality testing there because we're not adding a herbicide or anything to mm -hmm. the res. We're doing mechanical harvesting. So that we're not treating the water. Right. So there are, right. Thanks. Right. It, there could be some some bloom there, and we have to, but and we keep money should we need to, but a lot of times we don't we don't we have money in the budget for a just in case scenario. Your point is well taken though about kind of a, a unified approach of looking at a watershed in total, and that's what Mystic River Watershed Association does. And that's why they're a great partner to the town of Arlington in this effort, because we're just the town of Arlington. I mean, we can't look at the whole watershed area. Um, we don't have the funds and we don't have the jurisdiction. Um, so they're really a good partner in helping us do that. Um, they keep track of alewife. Um, they're, they're one of the proponents who helped um, the town of Cambridge clean up their CSOs, their, their combined sewer flows to make that cleaner there. So. Um, we're trying to partner with them to get at these kinds of questions that you're asking. I, one more, I think I understand it. You had mentioned oxygen levels being tested. Mm -hmm. Do we know that we any oxygen levels at Arlington Reservoir? That I don't know. I'd have to look at an old report. I know that they we do have those levels for Spy Pond um, okay. in the reports right, routinely. You. I don't remember about the reservoir. I'd have to check that. All right, thanks. Um, um, so the water, the water leaves McLennan Park, flows into Lexington, and eventually ends up in the, in the res. Uh, 
How's your working relationship with Lexington? Next. <laughs> I think we have good relations with the Conservation Commission, and we could talk with them about those issues. We've tried to get some money from the Mexican government for harvesting the reservoir, and that's been a difficult process. Even though part of it's in Lexington, they yeah, we've been working on that. Not only part of it's in Lexington, one of the biggest yeah. outfalls yeah. into the res is coming from mm -hmm. Lexington. Okay, so they don't want to do anything about it. Well, they some do and some don't. But no. Discussed it a couple of times, so we've never achieved any any uh, money. The movement. But they, it doesn't have to be money. They can take they can take um, all the um, all the um, uh, whatever they take another the res they forgot the name of the the plant. Water chestnuts. But, uh, water chestnuts. Yeah, the water chestnuts, and they could take those and incinerate them for us. I mean, so it doesn't have to be just a payment. So there'd be other ways to help out. Uh, we did uh, send a letter to the selectmen and to the town manager asking for them again to approach <coughs> Lexington and ask for help. So we do that once a year. <coughs> do they approach Lexington? They do. Okay. They I know Adam talked to Carl, definitely. Can we just dam up the reservoir and let it all back up to the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the Lexington side is the last side that gets uh, cleaned out by the office. So if we run out of money, it's Okay, are there any other questions uh, in, in any of the water bodies or the budgets for anybody here? Now, well, in, in 19 or in 20, there's, there's, there's this new line item, spy permitting. What's that? That's if we have to, we'll need more permitting. Yeah. We have the permits that we get for treatment only last so long, so we have to go back and get new permits. So we so added a little bit. You haven't had that in the earlier years? Or was it wasn't that detailed. Buried? It just was kind of buried in okay, there. Okay, so just pulling that yeah, line. Yeah, it's right. becoming more expensive, so it rates okay. its own line. <laughs> and if I may, I just I just looked up my references, but we did have a 2012 Arlington Aquatic Management um, Program report um, to the Conservation Commission, and that was for Spy Pond, the Reservoir, and Hills Pond. So we would have that data in there. 2012. Yeah. I don't know if we have a more recent one, but we Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Any questions at all? Now's the time to ask. Okay. Um, if we decide, I think, Alan, <coughs> weren't we thinking of putting this budget into the, or this report into the FinCon report at one point? Um, yeah, and, and, but Okay. If Alan wanted to talk to somebody about getting the, I assume this is an Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Okay. They'd go to you? Yes. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your time Thank you. And, Thank you. and all the efforts you do for the town of Arlington. Okay. Uh, we have two sets of minutes. <laughs> okay, so let's do February 1st. <coughs> now, uh, Now what we're going to try to do is send that these out ahead electronically, and you we know. We did do that. I'm sorry. We did do that. We did do that. Okay, and so we're going to do that from now on. So please take a look at it, and then. Uh, so Peter, do you think we could project this up on the screen for the audience? Or? Not today. Okay, <laughs> but uh, I know that. But in, in the, the future, future, we should be able to do that in the future. Yeah. Okay. So we'll try to do that, see if we can work out without being too complex, uh, and save some paper. Um, are there any corrections in the February 1st? What? We just left lots of space there for you to, it's easier to read. Oh, Dick. 
two L's in O'Neill on the top. Ah. Okay, Wiz, you see that? Yeah. Catch. Anything else? There's a Y in dice. The E in dice, I should say. The Y is there, not the E. That is among the people in the tent. That's right. <laughs> okay, anything else? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to accept the minutes as corrected. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Liz, then uh, you can move ahead with Peter helping you to get this posted. Okay. Uh, now, Peter, we'll have to do put the manager's spreadsheet attached to this, or that that went out with the uh, that the manager presented. Okay, we'll do. Okay, great. Okay, now let's go to the uh, February eighth. Do we have any uh, corrections? Give you guys a couple minutes to catch up. The typo on the Harry Barber program it should say this mm -hmm. instead of the PCs. Well, I think Harp is spelled with a C. That matters. Right. Yeah. Susan, yeah. Susan Cox. Yes. Are you sure? Well, yeah. at the top, uh, it's the same. It's S C S C. A little controller. You know what? I can tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll get the right. I'll get. I'll double check. Okay. What, 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 what was the uh, other problem with? On the top of the second page. Uh, Second since the rental program. Strike the S of these. Is that, it just, oh, these. Thank you. Uh, a bunch of line, a couple lines below that. There's Calander, which is the type of. Diggins to provide Calander. So Diggins is a couple yeah. of <laughs> Oh, the, oh. And uh, meetings just below that, meetings plain Monday and Wednesday. Carp is with a C. C? Yes. Another advantage of doing it electronically. Okay, anything else? Let's spell check. Yeah, you won't get into this. Any others? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor accepting the minutes is corrected. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, since we just heard the appropriation for water bodies uh, and all the discussions, uh, the request this year is for an appropriation of 55000 <coughs> What is the uh, will of the committee? Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, Alan, moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'm glad to see them sort of branching out beyond the big three. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's a good step. We'll see how this, uh, how this works. Okay, any further discussion? 
Okay, all those in favor of 55,000 under Article 48 for the water bodies, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Okay, so that takes care of Article 48. Uh, Liz is working to get all the other committees and commissions. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm just sort of playing with this on the, uh, you know, you saw all the various committees and commissions that deal with water bodies all come in here and, and put together a reasonably comprehensive program over the years. And uh, I guess I'd like to see that for the arts. <laughs> you know, you, you just saw sort of one group. I, uh, and maybe, I, I'd better talk maybe to the moderator. We could take one of these articles uh, and, and sort of form, maybe try to form something where they're all, I mean, that's what the Ar Arlington Culture and Arts Group is supposed to be, is serve as an umbrella for all this. Uh, but we've got them, we've got the public arts, we've got the Alive program, uh, and, and a lot of others working. So uh, I'll talk to the moderator. Maybe we could use one of the articles to sort of force everything together. Uh, I'll, I'll play that out with the manager and see, see what he thinks. Um, okay, budgets. So we got nice new books. I was used to spend the first hour or two taking all these out, the uh, my old budgets, and throwing in the three into my new ones. Okay, who wants to present a budget? Yeah, I'll have Okay. I, I, Peter and I, uh, we did express to the deputy town manager um, thanking them for this type book that we got this year. We, we thank them on behalf of the Finance Committee for our, uh, our books. So yep. We pass that on. Uh, I'd like to start with the, uh, the our own budget, our Finance Committee budget. Okay. And that's on page 21. <coughs> And where our budget, uh, we're looking for ten thousand three hundred dollars, and the only change is um, welcoming Liz as a, a, a secretary here. Yeah, that's that's the change in, in, in the salary portion. Okay, so you, are you recommending this printing? I'm recommending $10,300. Oh, $10,300. Okay. As printed. Okay, you're recommending as printed. As printed. Are there any questions? Pretty straightforward. Okay, all those in favor of $10,300 for the Finance Committee budget, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Action. Okay, we'll go to uh, the Board of Selectmen, page 23, and it's on actually page 25. Okay. Again, this, uh, no ch the only changes here is um, a, a salary increases, and they're looking for a total of 252700 So I'm recommended as printed. Okay, so overall increase of 1.19%. Okay. Now, are all the contracts, what are the contracts all? Do. Anybody uh, know? I think there's another. I could. I think there's another year on So they're at the end of fiscal eight, eighteen. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, that sounds right. Okay, so the uh, 
the colas and the steps are all built in here. Now, are there any interesting, any uh, changes? Okay, so the accounting and auditing is up by 15,000. Right. Um, Did you want to do elections tonight? Yeah, we want, want to do elections after. Then okay, I'll how do you want to do it? I'm going with selectmen, elections, <coughs> and, then, and then accounting. Okay, so on page 21, oh wait, I don't know if I did that. Is page 25 a collection of all of these? No. No. Just the, okay, just the select them. Okay, then, uh, no big changes. Other questions from the committee? Alan. I just wanted to point out, this will be true in all the budgets with offsets, that the offsets have been pulled out of salaries and put uh, below the like below the bottom line now. It's, it, it's to, to be more compliant with some of the recommendations, and it's more compliant with the FinCom uh, report. So Excellent. So we deal with the water and sewer offsets, and there's a, a CPA offset coming up. Yeah, because it always used to be. So we're going from. It's just a reformatting of the right. Of so when we go on page 26, instead of bringing forward 230,000 on the far right, it brings forth 259. Right. Just that makes it a lot easier to understand. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Excellent. See, we can have an impact. We're <laughs> slowly harmonizing all the different numbers. Okay, that's good. Uh, questions, comments? Okay, your recommendation is as printed? Yes. Do I have a motion? Wait a minute, wait a minute. We want to add the, uh, the um, special election in the fall to this, don't we? No, that, well, that, that comes on the. Um, yeah, first off, the selectments. This is on the selectments budget. That's the election budget. Which is oh, oh we're still in. I'm sorry. We're still on select. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so again, as printed, 252-700. Okay. I'm sorry. Did I get a motion in a second? He made a motion. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion on the selectman's budget? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Favorable action. Unanimous. 215-17. Okay, elections. On the election budget, um, as we know from the, the current budget, we had we had six elections this past year, and our next budget it looks like we're going to have one, unless something changes. So there, there would definitely be a decrease. Um, however, they're asking for a change in the figure uh, of sixty-seven thousand five eighty-eight. Uh, when we spoke to Marie, Marie would like to include the, um, the cost of, of a special town meeting should, they, should they, there be one. And that cost would be added to that figure. It would be 5036 5036 Right. And that would bring that the, a new total of 72624 72 72,624, yes. an addition for a special town meeting in the fall? In the fall, right. 5036, okay. And that includes, with that number includes the constable, the custodian, postal expenses, and uh, printing and distribution of the warrant, for, should there be a call for a special town meeting. Just on a side note, um, you we're all familiar, we had the special election here in this, this past, that special election ran for 11 days um, at the town hall, and it, it brought in approximately 10,000 voters. 
almost just about a third of the registered voters in the town of took advantage of that special election. Should they have it again, you're going to break it down. Early voting. I call it yeah, early voting. I call it special elections. It's um, they're going to tweak it even so you you'll have two places to go. They'll have the East Arlington because one of the problems in that in that early election was you had two different ballots. One for if you had um, Rogers, yeah, and said right, and one yes, for sir. Gobley. So you had to make sure when they were passing out that the right wherever precinct you, you got the right ballot, and, and that took a little time. Um, and then some tweaking some others. It's one thing to go to a voting poll and have a list of names from for that precinct, but when you go to an early election and you had thirty-three thousand names in a book, it became <coughs> it was it was a uh, <coughs> To say the least, different. And um, when you when you had you had lines going up, down up and down Mass Ave trying to get this vote, so they, but they did they had almost ten thousand votes, and the rules and the procedures were changing because it was brand new from the Secretary of State daily. So, so they're going to work that up. More than likely, there's a possibility that there will be an early election. For the net for the next state election, but that's unknown at this time. Well, nobody said democracy was either cheap or easy. It, it was an experience. It, uh, it was well received, but it was an experience, and it, um, um, the work is it was phenomenal. Especially the the, the, the register of voters, uh, Karen, uh, Karen Foley, in, in, in the clerk's office, in the selectman's office, especially the selectman's office. It was just yeah. how we did it for eleven days. It's, Something else, something I'll never forget. <laughs> so anyway, that figure is um, seventy-two thousand six twenty-four. Okay. Is there any further discussion or questions? Um, Alan, right there, got, it. got it. Okay. Uh, all those, uh, all those in favor of seventy-two six twenty-four, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Two fifteen seventeen. Accounting. Uh, uh, one before that is the um, uh, printing of. of, of uh, oh, oops. Sorry, I skipped my accounting. If you notice on it, that's on page twenty-eight. That's an, uh, an increase of fifteen thousand dollars, and when we checked. On, on the increase, it's actually for two reasons. One is for five thousand dollars for a school department uh, de elementary and secondary education audit, and a ten thousand um, dollars the cost of hiring an outside audit to perform a, a fraud risk assessment. <coughs> so ten thousand for the fraud risk assessment, assessment, and five thousand for a elementary school uh, audit. What is uh, a uh, elementary and secondary school audit? What is a broad risk assessment? Fraud. 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 <coughs> now, I thought it might be, but it's interesting that they use fraud. It was only one word, you know, versus three. But uh, is there any particular? Who's asking? Who, why are we doing this? It is coming out of the comptroller's office, and. Um, I checked, I remember I raised the question, and, and you brought it up too, Alan. The schools, it says mandated, but when I checked with town council and also the deputy t town manager, it, 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 it's a procedural thing that happens periodically, so it's, it doesn't come under that, something like that was newly mandated, and you asked the question, if it's mandated, would the state have to pay for it? But that's not the case, so it, it, it's actually a, Play on, just a, a word. They could have called it something else, but it, it, it happens periodically. It's from what I was. Okay, so in other words, the, I, I understand the five thousand is mandated. Yeah. Now, uh, okay. Will we be doing the fraud assessment every year, or just? I don't think so. This is hiring the outside, an outside auditor to perform a fraud risk assessment. I'm assuming it's a 
I'm assuming it's a, it's a, it's a one time for now. Okay. Has it come up for the next uh, budget cycle? And could you double check that with him? We don't have to hold up the vote, but if you could just, you know, how often does he anticipate okay. doing that? Yeah. And is that, is that the, that's the whole town system? What, I mean, what kind of fraud are we talking about? If I may ask, have you any idea? I, I, I have no idea. This yeah. is uh, I did not talk to the comptroller. I, I, I kind of went to I went to town council on one question, and the deputy town manager on another. I mean, usually if you're talking fraud, you're talking cash. So it could be. I mean, you could be talking recreation. You could be talking obviously treasurer collector. You could be talking anybody in the town. Parking oh, meters. Parking meters. <coughs> anything. Anything that, that raises funds, I guess, right? So. Okay. So if you could follow up on that. Okay. And uh, did they say anything about the uh, mandate? Um, do you yes. ask it? Yeah, it doesn't appear. It, I'm it, sorry? It, it doesn't appear that they're gonna, it's just the word that they use, but it's, it, it happens periodically, I guess. Okay, uh, questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. And the printing of town reports, um, there's no change there. It's for, it's for $3,500. And I'll, I'll move as printed. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> wow, I wonder how they were able to get it so cheap last year. Um, I, I think there was an agreement reached for the printing. So okay. I think we can select, we can select, uh, we can Thank the selectors office for that. Okay, any further discussion? Do I have a, uh, a motion has been made and seconded for favorable action? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 215-17. Any others, David? Yeah, I'd like to go to uh, page 63, uh, 64. Town clerks. Um, in the town cl clerks portion, there is, as of uh, the past month, there is a vacancy in the town clerk's office, and that's currently um, being handled through um, human resources as well as the town clerk to, to fill the, the, the full time vacancy position. And that, I guess, um, they're in the process of doing interviews now. And um, I don't know if you saw me, but Florence McGee, who's been there a long time, has, <laughs> has uh, decided to let it go. So uh, she's been there as long as I've been around. Uh, but, uh, she, she wants to come back. And it's, it's, it's undecided at this point whether that little part-time section will, will be um, filled or not. But they are considering it. Yeah, it's still, um, I guess, they, a couple of things. They have to, but my understanding is the, the person that has left, uh, they're still in the process of figuring out uh, that, 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 that pay and benefit package. So, and then, that, then they're also in the process of, of hiring a new full timer. They don't know at what pay scale at this point that new person would, would be coming in at. And then again, um, the little part time, but I think it's 20 hours a week or something that, that uh, yeah. Florence works. So, well, not even that point two three. Yeah, it, it was less than 10, 10 hours. Yeah. So. But so um, the figure would be two seven seven two hundred seventy seven thousand three twenty six. 
Is that your recommendation? Yes. Do I have a motion? So move. Second? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, David. And the last one I have is the, is the uh, Board of Registrars. And again, that um, is just salary adjustments for a total of 68,866. So I'm recommending as, uh, as presented. So that's the step. Okay. Virtually no changes from last year? No, no changes. No. Yeah. Questions? Motion. So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Any others, David? I'll defer to Peter if he's ready with legal or not. I'm not sure. Uh, we could do a legal. Okay. Page. The legal expenses, he's got those um, predict, predicted flat line, no change. Um, that's on page 60. Um, he also has in hand um, um, 25000 from special town meeting appropriation for UGAR uh, legal work, which he expects, his to, expects to apply also this, this uh, in FY18. Um, uh, although the, the, he says the town is uh, facing some sizable uh, exposures. Uh, he doesn't expect them to. He, <coughs> he expects he expects to win, or for the town not to be assessed very much. Um, however, in these in this case, the uh, limitation on on legal expenses of a hundred thousand dollars applies. So, a lot of money, but it's not a million dollars. Now, we, the 25000 for Buchers, all the expenses, legal expenses, was that at special town meeting last year, or was that a transfer from the reserve fund? If I, I didn't, remember? I didn't, I didn't check, but he said it was a, uh, a vote. I think it was special, I, I thought it was special town meeting. I yeah, I think so too. Now, so that'll stay with the warrant article. Right. So that'll stay with the warrant article. There's in the budgets in the back another twenty-five thousand requested. The trouble is there's no warrant article. <coughs> so. In the budgets in the back of one. Well, the, in the budgets in the back the here. Two forty-five. Oh. Yeah. Right. Up, well, that's poet Orion. Hold on. UGAR legal expenses, 243. Yeah, page 243, it shows 25,000 for fiscal 17, 
and a request for another 25,000. But I don't remember a Warren article, please correct me if I'm wrong, in the annual town meeting for 25,000 or for anything, which means either he puts it in the special or it's got to go in this budget. Well, based on our conversation today, he, he, he's not counting on that. That's, that's, do you think I have that right, uh, David? Say again, David? I don't think he's counting on, on no, any no, other no, appropriation. Not based on, a, on a, our conversation this, this morning with him. Okay, so he's not requesting an, an additional 25000 for this year? Right. Okay. Uh, that may have come out some previous yeah, conversation. Yeah, right. <coughs> exactly. I just like I said, the only thing I'm going on is the uh, is the budget book. Yeah. What page was that again, Al? Two forty-three. It looks like a warrant article. I mean, they they can still get into the estimate special if if there was a mix up. I'll double check on that. Okay, if you could. You know, either, like I said, he either puts it in here or he puts it in the special. Because unless I'm mistaken, it's not in the annual. Um. Okay, are there... Uh, <coughs> oh, let me go on now. Okay, go ahead. That, that was just the legal expenses. Now, on the salary page 61 um, the assi assistant claims coordinator the part-time position at the bottom of the list um, that person has moved farther away and doesn't want to commute anymore and they've hired a replacement um, at okay. step five so her salary will be 25,629 instead of the number that's there Nine thousand nine eighty one. So twenty five six twenty nine. Yes. So <clears throat> if you carry that, if you carry that forward to the to page eighty, um, salaries and wages then would be smaller on the bottom line would be smaller by a amount of four thousand three hundred fifty two, which makes the bottom line. Four thousand four eight four five eight five. Four eight four five eight five. Okay. And other than that, uh, uh, propose the uh, budget as written. Right. Or when Ed retires, that longevity budget's going to go way down. <laughs> that helps. Okay, so you're recommending $484,585. Yes. And Alan, you could correct going down. Any questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 2 15 17. Peter? That's it for us. Okay. We can do some health and human services. We can do some health and human services if you want. Let's do it. We've got 33 more minutes. <laughs> okay. So we could do the um, veterans budget, which is on page uh, uh, 164. So 
with the veterans, I just want to remind folks that uh, a lot of the aid to the veterans gets reimbursed <coughs> from the state. So aid and assistance gets reimbursed at 75% and housing assistance at 100%. So we get money every month, but you just have to remember that it, it doesn't match up. Just what we submit to be reimbursed doesn't automatically come back the next month with the you know, exact matchup. But eventually it will all match up. Um, so other than that, there were no changes to the budget. Um, so, um, and I, you, you've, um, you've met uh, the Director of Veterans Services before, and he's doing a really good job, and really doing a lot of outreach to make sure that everybody who's entitled knows that they are and getting what they are entitled to have. So um, I would just, recommend as printed the budget of $443,200. Okay, second motion? Yes. The second <coughs> second. Now, uh, any questions? Uh, now, a couple of times we've had to do transfers. Does he feel reasonably confident that he will not need any transfers this fiscal year? Uh, that's what, yeah, we met with Christine. Okay, so th that's what she believes. Okay, that is good. Uh, that was really growing. You could see on the amount we spent 433 in fiscal 2015. So it's, it, I think it's largely depending on the economy. Right. Yeah. Questions? Good timing. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for 443-200. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Okay. Okay, then uh, we'll have to go to the, um, the reserve, or you know, it was at the back. Oh, the enterprise? The enterprise yeah. funds. Yes, yeah, so we do um, Council on Aging um, Transportation. It's on page 202, really 203. Okay, page 203, or 203. Great. So I've, John and I went through this budget to make sure we knew, we went with, uh, talked to Christine so we knew what things meant and just, um, to explain, um, I asked under the training line item what they're trained in. Now, um, the main van driver passed away and is now um, has been replaced with four on call uh, drivers so that um, when they're needed, somebody is available. And so the training involves, all, all the <coughs> drivers have to be trained in CPR, they have to be trained in how to actually get people, uh, the senior citizens on and off the, um, the van and make sure they're all buckled and everything. So there's the training that goes into that. Um, let's see, what else? Is the rest are fairly self-explanatory. And then on the uh, page 204, the line item 4261, the DART fees are the dial-a-ride taxis, and those are um, the, the tickets that you buy in advance to take the taxi. Um, and then line item 4830, gifts, donations, and grants. He feels that is a good number. Um, and then the um, last line item, 4972, the transfer from retained earnings, is the Council on Aging Surplus. Now they are going to probably have fewer CDBG funds available this coming fiscal year. 
so um, do you have their uh, fund balance or retained earnings at the end of fiscal oh, 16? Shoot. I forgot to yeah, ask right. her that again. Yeah, right. yeah. No, I don't. Right. That will affect your salary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to wait until I have that? Or yeah, let's okay. She'll be an email when you have a chance. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Do you have any other questions on that on the council and the aging budget, the transportation budget? I mean. Okay. Are there any? I, I have a question. Yeah. It just doesn't matter of interest. Is the training because of the new people? Since there wasn't any in previous years, or. Um, or is that just a new way of doing the post? No, it's, I think they get trained every year if there are new new people, but there are the four drivers now, so they had to get trained. But in previous years, I think there was the main driver and then sometimes there was an on-call driver, so <laughs> whoever had to be trained was trained. I'm just asking out of curiosity about the action. Um, they probably don't give benefits. Right. So, I mean, this year isn't over yet, so I, that was her best estimate for 2017. I don't, I'm not sure what else you're asking. No, there, there, there was no actual expense in 15 and 16. Right. Well, I don't remember why. I don't remember whether they but, but didn't always, need the training because it had already been probably done. Probably got moved around from was someplace else, probably in a very good budget. Because he was, he drove that van for many years. He probably felt it would, it, you have to update your training like every what, two years? For CPR. Training. For CPR? Yeah. Could have been under expenses. How's the, uh, the numbers? Are the numbers using the van transportation system up, down, the same? Like, the impression I got is that, that she doesn't think the van is is terribly useful and probably going to phase it out over time yeah. and use taxis. What, what she said was a lot of people like to drive and there's no parking or very little parking. So that's, that's an issue. Yeah. But they do use it for uh, the trans the medical transportation. Right, right. So they can, if you're a senior citizen, you can be transported <coughs> within the contiguous uh, towns through the, the van. And um, I mean, like John was saying, you can use the s transportation to get to the senior center, but for whatever reason, people get driven or drive themselves to the senior center. Yeah. Um, what else? And then the taxis are just, you know, when you're a senior citizen, you can use the taxis at a lower rate, but you have to buy the tickets yep. at a time. And I'm sure today the taxis will be desperate to get any business they can. Questions? Okay. Are you recommending as printed? Yes. And I will ask Christine about the, uh, the fund balances for this. And okay. And just the trend in ridership of the van would be interesting okay. to see. Uh, is there a second to that? Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Okay. All right. And I think uh, we can do the next one. Um, AYCC. All right, so if you look at that budget, the, um, the line item for administrative fees, you know, that $25,000 is actually because they're uh, buying a new um, EHR system. I'm sorry, a new EHR, medical records, electronic health records system. The other one they had is older. This one can do more and can do it faster. 
it has. Uh, Where are you, Mark? Mary Martin? I'm sorry. I'm on the AYCC budget on the next page. It's and the really line item I'm talking about is 5230, administrative fees. With administrative spelled wrong. In case that was <laughs> confusing you. <laughs> so is this a one shot deal? Yes. <clears throat> And that person, the person who will work on the EHR has uh, become a full-time person. Um, let's see. And then on, the, on page 210. Okay, is that the medical records card? No, I think it's the, the nurse. Oh. All right, so if you look at... Under the um, revenue, there will be um, one of the grants they got is gone now, um, and they're getting less in the CDBG money. Um, but the gifts and donations, she um, was confident in that number. The insurance reimbursements will go up. Um, most likely because of better coding through the better, the new EHR. And She's, she, she was saying that they're getting very good at doing the billing and things like that. But they know how to do that better. Well, because of the system, right. because it's more automatic. And they have, um, the psychiatrist that they have now does the same thing as the, as the other one. But you know, he oversees the work, but the psych nurse they have actually does more work and um, is allowed by law to make a lot of the um, prescriptions to prescribe the meds. So uh, that is, and that's Kathy Carey, Bob, Dr. Carey's daughter, Kathy. Yeah. Right. So she's she is um, taking on a, a bigger work. So, I don't know, does anybody have any other questions about the staffing or anything? Hey, Alan? Um, the donations uh, line, the, uh, the 2016 actual is $12,000 and they budgeted 68000 and they're now they're expecting 90000 Do you know how, the, how this year's donations are going? Um, I don't know. Because there was you a, go a, a to big that, gap um, between actual Right. Did budget. you go to the A1CC? Yeah, the they, gala. They, they, they do the gala each year, you know, AYCC does a yeah. Yeah. gala that's gotten to be quite successful, I think. Well, do, you, well, do you want to know what the numbers are? I mean, is $90,000 realistic? Yeah, I think and it we, is. A, we yeah. asked that question, was that a realistic yeah. number? She said yes. Now, if you want, I can go back and ask her specifically where it's coming from, but the gala has been very successful, and the donations that come from 
from people who aren't attending the gala. Yeah. Okay, well, as long as you think it's realistic. Then, right. Then it just, there's, there's a big discrepancy between 12,000 and 90,000. Right. Correct. Well, she, she seemed very confident. That, okay. But if you want, I will ask her before we go. I, but we talked about it, but I can ask again specifically is it coming from just the gala or what? Other questions? Peter? Maybe this is an improper question, but who would you uh, talk to about this budget? Christine. Christine Bongiorno. Oh. Other questions? Uh, it's, those were state grants they had, they uh, lost. Um, no, it used to be some local. I don't think it was a state grant. It was a local organization, local medical organization, so they got grant funds from. And that's the one. Other questions? So do you want me to wait and get more answers from her before we vote this? Uh, How's the committee feel? Dick? Well, she comes back at the end. It isn't, isn't going to affect the bottom line. Okay. Okay, so you're recommending as printed uh, 630 revenue, 630 expenses. Yes. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Any other further discussion? So if you can report back on those next mm -hmm. week, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to know what those gr other grants are, specific, more specifically. You know, the ones they lost. Okay. All those in favor uh, of the 630 on the Enterprise Fund, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 215.17. Okay? Great. Okay. So I, we still had some questions on the other, okay. the other health and human service budget, so I don't want to present those because they're... So is that your budgets for today? Yes. Okay. Anybody else have a 15 minute budget? Okay. Uh, yeah, we, again, we, we uh, Monday, <laughs> I guess we don't meet on Mondays in February. Uh, so if you look at our calendar, uh, so there will be no meeting on, fe on uh, next Monday because it's President's Day. I still think we call it Washington State. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on Wednesday, the February 22nd, the Arlington Public Arts uh, is back. And uh, we can have more questions on that. Uh, who will have budgets on Wednesday? We need budgets, guys. I think we can have police and fire. Okay, that'd be great. We should have the rest of ours. Okay, that'd be good. Any others? And I believe that. Uh, Planning budget to town manage budget. Right. I would like it to do. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, Grant, how's the water and sewer budget coming? Coming along. We have the warrant article that uh, we can tell you about. Amounts for the water article. You have the amounts for the water article? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go to articles uh, 41 and 42 and 43. 41? I'm sorry, 42. 42 and 43. The this is in the warrant. Okay, 42 is for sewer. And they're appropriating a total of 900,000. 100,000 will be cash from the Enterprise Fund, and 800,000 will be borrowed MWRA Fund 5. Now, will the hundred thousand dollars cash be in the budget? Or yes. Okay. So the only thing we're doing in this article is the eight hundred thousand. Well, the yeah, the wording says determine how the appropriation shall be raised. So that's why 
will be raised by 100 from Enterprise Fund, which is in the budget, and, and 800,000 from the MWRA loan. It's the wording of it that has me confused as to how to say it, but they're going to be borrowing 800,000. Okay, so we're borrowing 800,000. Uh, could you double check on whether that 100,000 should be appropriated in the budget versus this Warren article? Yeah, it's in the budget. Okay, so the only thing we're worried about now is the 800,000 in this article. Okay. Uh, now, you can come back and we can modify it if, that, if, if that's not how we want to. Right. But let's deal with the 800,000. That's how we usually do it every year, it's in, it's in the budget. But uh, again, it's the wording of how it will be appropriated. Yeah. Know, so. Okay, so uh, they request $800,000 borrowing from the NWRA. This is these interest-free loans. Uh, uh, we borrow the money from them and then pay them back over a period of time, so with, uh, without interest. Uh, any particular things they're doing with this money? Uh, well, they do what about a, uh, they try and do a mile a year on repairing the sewer lines, and they do it uh, basically as a uh, where their detection devices seem the most leakage. Okay, is there any questions? Well, do you have an idea how much, uh, what part of the town they've done detection on? Uh, leak detection, is it, you know, what fraction of the town has been done? I did last year, I'll do it this year. Yeah. Find out this year. Okay. Any questions on the $800,000 loan? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Article 43. And in the same wording, um, that's the uh, what it means they're looking for a uh, to borrow one uh, million one hundred thousand with a hundred thousand coming from the enterprise fund for a total of appropriation of one point two million. Okay. Same question. If you could just confirm it. So right now we'll just put a million one borrowed uh, on water mains, and I assume they do the same thing. They're doing a certain number of. Yes. Yeah, the answer uh, will likely be uh, that they don't, it's all over. It depends on where, where they concentrate the effort because it depends on where the, the major leak is, uh, leaks are, but I could find the concentration that they plan. And so it also matters if they have to be tearing up the road for some other reason. Yeah, he says it's, um, you know, there's the, there's the, um, uh, accidental ones, so the ones that they can't plan for, yeah. um, that, that come up too. I can find a proportion of that too if it matters. Okay, any questions? Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Anybody else have anything else? You guys want to get out 10 minutes early, don't you? Okay, if there's no other business before the committee, uh, remember there's no meeting next Monday. We will meet again next Wednesday. Dick. Okay. Anybody want to get up to date on the O'Neill plaque? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I uh, went back to the place where we bought it. After I took and got some information of when O'Neill died and, and so forth, and they traced it back, and they have, they're not sure if they have the original drawings of the plaque, but the plaque happened to be in my, my name, as far as the buyer of it, which I can remember we yep. got it. Yep. So, the, the place where I got it is at uh, uh, Oak Grove Divini, Divini. 
and now it's merged. So I won't know for about another week if they have it because they merge two companies and each one takes care of their own. They don't know. So Devaney is on vacation. And when he comes back, he'll call me and let me know. Oh, that's great. That's great. I hadn't even thought about that, Terry. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Alan, guys, has anybody checked with, with the people here? Uh, I assume Fred would have, you know, Fred knows about it. But and I assume he would have checked all the closets and such. No, I don't know. Yeah. Well, because we remember, there was, there was paintings here, too. Remember, there was paintings no. along. They were donated from the, from the art council or something. So, yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there is a, a room on that end of the building downstairs that used to be a storage. Because it's half the size of this room, but it's yeah. a good area. <laughs> uh, and what I'll, what I'll do is... Maybe one of the kitchen. Me? And you, you'd also suggest that maybe the kitchen... There's a... There's a um, on the other side of this wall here, the, the, down there is a kitchen. Here is is a, is a storage supply room. Yeah. On the other side of that wall, but there is a storage room downstairs, mm -hmm. uh, off the guard room. But what I'll do is, um, if somebody knows who I am when I come in this building, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask because it might have been put just away. Yeah, um, I, I'm just assuming that, that the uh, chief would have, you know, searched the place thoroughly because he knows the problem. Oh, he does. He does. He, he is aware of it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he knows the problem, but he knows he's going to have to pay for it, or somebody's going to have to pay for it besides us. And uh, I'll ask all the cats. So I'm assuming he did all that. Well, like I say, I'll come to the house. I'll check one day. Can't hurt. There's a court case with the with the contractor. I'm sorry. There's a court case with the contractor. Maybe we could ask this. Sure. Then we'll left. Yeah, throw that into. I really don't care who paid for it. I think it was. Uh, uh, it, it was it was terrible that a plaque like that could have been taken down and then just lost. Of course, they lost half the infrastructure for the Salt and Pepper Bridge yeah. going over the Charles River. Yeah. 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 Okay, is there any other business before the committee? Ms. Grant. Well, I did verify that those amounts are in the budget under rehab, water, and sewage. You still want me to ask him to say that's what those Oh, the 100000 Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I guess you don't have to worry about it. And they can ask me again. It's yeah, double check yeah. just to make sure it's not another hundred they're looking for. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.